OK, let's have a look at the grid then for our pre-66 touring cars. It'll be uh, earlier winner Alan Greenall in his Ford Falcon on pole alongside Robin Slater in the Ford Anglia. This uh, result based on the... Uh, the uh, grid based on the result of the first race, I should say. Barry Syme and Neil Bray in their minis on row two. And row three, Pat Keneally's Lotus Cortina and Nathan Williams in his mini. Row four is the uh, Davies family mini. It'll be John Davies driving this time alongside Martin Reynolds in his Anglia. Row five, James Ibbotson, Hillman Imp, Kevin Swan, Anglia. Eric Walker's Anglia, Adam Gittings, Morris Minor. Row seven, it is James Burroughs' mini, Luke Wilson, Austin A40. Row 8, Paul Cooper's Cortina, though I think I saw that car on the trailer earlier on, so he may not be out in the Cortina GT, alongside Tim Scott Andrews in the Ford Falcon. Row 9, Patrick Harris, Morris Minor, Nathan Beresford, BMW. On the 10th row behind them, we should see Tim Dodwell in his mini, late addition to the programme, so not on our grid sheet. Keith Wright will be alongside him in the Morris Minor. Then row 11, we have uh, the cars that didn't finish race one. It'll be Brian Bedford taking over from Steve Evans in the Austin A40. Piers Grange in the Mustang. Seen him in the assembly area, so he will be out in this one. Uh, Andy Mesham's mini. Michael Loveland, who failed to get away in his Hillman Imp in race one. Freddie Brown will not be starting. His engine failed in qualifying. While David Hall also had problems in qualifying. And I don't think the Lotus Cortina is going to be out, unfortunately. We'll wait and see, though, when the cars go to the grid in just a moment on a decidedly wet and slippery Brands Hatch. We well, once again say a huge thank you to uh, most of all the volunteer marshals but uh, also the medics, recovery crews and other officials here at Brands Hatch this weekend on what has been uh, very difficult circumstances. Thanks to all those who joined us for the uh, very special tribute this morning after the events of yesterday. Our thanks to the Orange Army for continuing their volunteer duties in uh, certainly difficult circumstances here this weekend. We thank each and every one of them, not just here at Brands Hatch, but around the UK and around the world. Without marshals, there would be no motorsports. Looking at the remaining races, then two races to come after the pre-66 touring cars. Got the second race for the Kumho BMW Championship and then another 50 minutes for the Goodyear Brick Car Endurance Championship trophy category with Axel van Nederveen. Without the assistance of pro driver Adriano Medeiros this weekend, but still a win up, his third win of the season. He'll aim to make it four in a row later on. But will we finally see Mark Lee take a win in his Ginetta? It's all coming up later. Pit stop penalties to consider as well. Have all the data for that one for you when the race uh, gets underway. The next up it is the pre-66 Classic Touring Cars, sponsored by Pultec Classic Race Engines. Green flag lap is underway then on a very wet and greasy track for the CTCRC Pultec Race Engines pre-66 touring cars. This will be a 15-minute race. And this time it may be the smaller cars that uh, have the advantage here. Making a break to get my voice back after the two sensational races we've just enjoyed. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, 
action so far. I know I said I needed a cold shower, but I didn't want uh, rain to come down like this. That's Tim Scott Andrews, the big falcon. BMW of Beresford. Piers Grange in the big Mustang. We'll see if he can come through from there. Missing one or two cars from the back. No Freddie Brown, no David Hall. I don't think Michael Loveland's there either. The imp breaking down at the start of race number one. This is going to be an interesting one because Alan Greenhall is not going to have the advantage that he did in race one on a wet track. It's a great leveller between these cars and the smaller cars could well be in contention for overall victory this time. Cars coming to the grid then for second race for the pre-66 touring car sponsored by Pultec Classic Race Engines. Alan Greenhall on the front row in the big Ford Falco alongside Robin Slater in the Anglia. And the minis could be the ones to watch here. Barry Simon, Neil Bray on row two. Patrick Keneally on row three in the uh, Lotus Cortina. I think the minis are going to be the ones to watch here in these wet conditions. Is this going to be as close as the last two races you've seen? The 383 Group 1 touring cars and the junior saloon cars. Some quite stunning racing. The rain shouldn't dampen things too much here. We'll see plenty of sideways action. That's what these cars were in some cases designed for, especially the Lotus Cortinas and the Minis. Looking to see if there are any uh, gaps on the grid here. Paul Cooper is not there in his Cortina. I don't think Patrick Harris is there with the Morris Minor either, unfortunately, further back. No Freddie Brown, his engine failed in qualifying. So it's the big Falcon on the front row. And an Anglia and a pair of minis, a Lotus Cortina and another mini. In for an interesting battle here, or a little bit of creeping there at the start. Now we get underway. It's slip and slide, watch for the minis coming through. Look at Neil Bray up the outside, superb start. He's going to go from four to first, or is he? Because Barry Syme is there on the inside. Impossible for Alan Greenall to get the power of the big Falcon down. Onto the wet tarmac and away goes Barry Syme into the lead ahead of Neil Bray. Robin Slater hanging on to the outside in the uh, Ford Anglia. Side by side in the run up to Druids Hill Bend. And it is the 25 of Barry Syme, the Scotsman, trying to justify his long journey down here with a victory. Down into Graham Hill Bend. Look how sideways Neil Bray is through at Graham Hill Bend there. Robin Slater getting the Anglia sideways well. Pat Keneally runs wide and also running well. James Ibbotson. Now that car could be quite unwieldy here with the engine in the back, but he's made a great start up alongside Nathan Williams. I think that is in one of the minis. It might be John Davies, though, in his mini up there alongside him. Similarly looking cars. It's Barry Syme and Neil Bray in their minis out in front ahead of Alan Greenall. Oh, Neil Bray understeering like mad there through clearways. You can hear the wheel spin. Oh, look at Ibbotson sideways rally style through clearways there. Barry Syme leads as they complete the first lap. 1.3 seconds in it between the two of them. Green all in third place. Then Robin Slater. It is John Davies in his mini up into fifth position. Then James Ibbotson. Watch for the Hillman Imp. I think the rain may have eased off very slightly, but it's still very slippery on the circuit. Down the hill they come, 87. Of, look at Ibbotson, how sideways that imp is. Fantastic to uh, watch. It won't help his lap times. Behind him is Nathan uh, Williams, I think that is. Certainly not slowing them down, though. As Barry Syme continues to lead in his classic mini, he's contested uh, a number of different historic events with this car over the last couple of years after lovingly restoring it. 
Neil Bray up there in second. He's previously raced on the short ovals. He's raced uh, more modern saloon cars as well. You can see they just cannot get the full power down. He's so greasy out there. Away goes the uh, 25 of Barry Syme. Sky looks lighter here, so I think uh, things are going to clear up again. The weather can't make up its mind here at uh, Brands Hatch today. Third place is still... In fact, it looks like it's John Davies. Yes, has come through the third, so it is minis one, two and three, as I uh, thought may happen. Down to fourth goes Alan Greenall. Through the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend. Rather subdued pace, of course, in these conditions. There's the two front row, row men, uh, Greenall and Slater. Ibbotson dancing the Hillman imp around on their tails. Then we've got Nathan Williams, Pat Keneally's Lotus Cortina leading his class. Still leading uh, Class A, of course, is Greenall for the big cars. Where is Piers Grange? The uh, Mustang started from the back. He's already up into 11th place. He could be one to watch in the closing stages as Green all under fire from uh, James Ibbotson. Now, look at the way that Hillman Imp is going. He may be sideways on every turn, but it's not slowing him down. He's up into, uh, I think it's fourth place now as they cross the line. Yes, James Ibbotson, could we see an overall win for a Hillman Imp? It's normally Freddie Brown who's on top in the uh, Imp class, but uh, unable to race this weekend with engine damage. It's Barry Syme continues to set the pace, although fastest lap for Neil Bray in uh, car number 76. Sideways there through Graham Hill Bend. Many years of uh, minis going sideways like that in the 80s when Brands Hatch stage rally cross. Neil Bray trying to attack for the lead. John Davies in third. Davies family newcomers to uh, the pre-66 this season. Now there's Piers Grange. He's got the headlights on on the Mustang. He's going sideways on every corner as well, but he's the momentum carrying him forward, trying to get the power of the big V8 down onto this wet tarmac. Over the line go the two minis. What's the gap this time? 0.658 of a second. So Bray is closing in on the Mini of Barry Syme ahead of him. Immaculate looking cars, both of them. It's all a question of who can get the power down the best here. A little bit of a slide there from Barry Syme. Nathan Williams has got ahead of Robin Slater, so uh, more passing from the Minis. Further back in the order. Andy Mesham's moving through from the back as well. The car to have in conditions like this definitely is a mini. They run one, two, and three. Now, where's that Hillman impulse? Oh, look how sideways Ibbotson is there. An impossible angle. That's how Bill McGovern used to drive them in the early 70s, the, uh, the Bevan Imps in the British Saloon Car Championship. Won three titles in those machines. There's Robin Slater being chased by uh, one of the Lotus Cortinas. That's, uh, I think, is Pat Keneally. Chased by Piers Grange, who's uh, mastering the monster Mustang. Here he comes up the outside, side by side with Pat Keneally. Nice to overhaul the 201. You can see the Mustang's power telling there, straight past the Anglia Robin Slater as if he's standing still. Piers Grange could be up with the leaders by the end of this one. Let's have a look at his lap times. He's uh, lapping in the 115s, so a little bit off the minis. But he's got Greenall in his sights. If he can take Greenall, he'll be in the lead of the class. Greenall passed by James Burrows there. So Alan Greenall, he says the car handles like a boat, so it should go well in wet conditions. But so uh, he's falling back down the order here. And his class rival is now behind him. They are 7th and 8th overall. Neil Bray trying to close the gap to leader Barry Syme up front. There's Andy Mesham started further back, a mini racing veteran in the number five. 
Chasing down Robin Slater, and he goes past the Anglia. Robin Slater certainly struggling with the conditions here. You can hear the wheel spin in the background. They just can't get any grip at all. Piers Grange going well. Can he catch our leaders? Andy Mesham is gobbling up the opposition from the back of the field. The Mini's so much more effective here. Mini and Lotus Cortina together. An iconic shot. Oh, and off goes Andy Mesham. Straight onto the grass there on the run up uh, Halewood Rise. Lucky not to hit the tyre wall. Would have been a shame if he'd uh, crashed the Mini. Now he's lost a couple of spots as a result of that. He's back behind Robin Slater now. Nice save, though. Bit of grass tracking. Meantime up front, it's still Syme from Bray. And James Ibbotson in fourth has just done the fastest lap of the race as Robin Slater goes off. Slid too wide there. Now James Ibbotson, how far behind the uh, minis is he? Yeah, a couple of seconds off John Davies. And there's been a change to the leading Class A. Piers Grange has got the Mustang past Alan Greenall. Mustang and the Falcon. There's the leader, Barry Syme, ahead of Bray. Further back in the order, John Davies. Now, where's Ibbotson? There he is. He's almost caught John Davies for third, but these two are a little further up the road. They're five seconds clear of the battle for third. Wonderful to see Barry Syme out in front. Got a lot of history, this uh, beautiful blue mini. the Cooper Straits coming up to lap Keith Wright in the Morris Minor who's leading his class class D is it Beresford no it's uh, Luke Wilson in the Austin A40 leading their class through clearways and on to Clark uh, Barry Syme increasing his lead slightly now they're doing personal bests, the top ten or so, all the time. So the circuit is drying. Five minutes to go. Over the line goes the 25 of Barry Syme. Now the lead up to 1.2 seconds now over Neil Bray. It's just between these two for the overall lead with uh, John Davies nearly six seconds further back. He's being... Uh, Reeled in slowly but shortly by uh, James Ibbotson. Although Davies did a personal best lap that time around. James Burrows is up to fifth. So four minis in the top five now. He's ahead of Piers Grange. He's just taken Nathan Williams. What kind of lap times is the Mustang on at the moment? Yeah, that's the uh, quickest car on track currently. But it is James Burrows who's done the fastest lap of the race. A 113.085 and he's down in fifth. The turquoise liveried uh, mini. There he is, ahead of Piers Grange, and the Mustang again into a slide. Having a big American car on uh, wet tarmac like this, it must be like I see even uh, on the Cooper straight there, Alan Greenall getting side. You just can't put any power down at all from a big V8 through your rear wheels. Fair play to all the drivers who are um, able to handle these cars in such difficult conditions. It'd be difficult to drive your road car, I think, around Brands Hatch in conditions like this. Never mind race. Now, here's the battle for third. John Davies under threat from James Ibbotson in the 87. That's a beautiful Hillman Imp Super. He's going for an overall podium. Tries to get alongside Davies. He spent most of the race completely sideways. That's James Ibbotson, and again there, look at that. Is he even using the brakes or just throwing the car sideways to slow down the uh, Shrigley Engineering tuned imp? He used to build the old space frame imps for uh, special saloon racing. James Burrows still ahead of Piers Grange behind them. He's an absolute joy to watch, James Ibbotson. He's only a young gun. 
Barry Symes still with the lead, incidentally, ahead of uh, Neil Bray. Two and a half minutes to go. They're coming up to lap the BMW of um, Nathan Beresford. Weather kill st still can't uh, make up its mind what it wants to do. A couple of minutes to go, just over. Up Halewood Hill goes the number 87 of uh, James Ibbotson, chasing down John Davies, or trying to for third place. How sideways is he going to get through Druids? To Graham Hill Ben, where he does uh, a bit of showboating and kicks the tail right out. Let's see if he's going to do it this time. John Davies third. Here comes the imp. Yep, there he goes again. It's an absolute joy to watch him. There go the leaders, and these two not all that far behind them, mainly because John Davies has just done the fastest lap. 1 minute 12.279, so the top two may not be completely uh, set as yet. Tim Dodwell being lapped there. He's being careful in his mini because he's got to drive home tonight in that cup. Neil Bray dodges round him. 1 minute 20 to go, so uh, a couple of laps remaining for Barry Syme, justifying his long journey from Scotland. Here they come into Druids. So about three, car, three or four mini lengths in it. Let's see how wet it is there under the trees. They lap Brian Bedford, I think that is in the Austin A40. Still the order the same further back. Another fastest lap for uh, John Davies. 1 minute 12.202. It's two and a half seconds down on these two. There is Davies in behind Brian Bedford's A40. Excuse me, he says. Comes through to lap him. And there's Ibbotson still fourth. Burroughs fifth. Grange sixth. Again, Barry Symes scrabbling for grip there around clearways. It's looking like it is a clear run for him to the flag. One more lap to go. Straight through from the second row into the lead as the uh, red lights went out. In our second race of the weekend for the Pultec Race Engines pre-66 touring cars. Are we going to see a last-ditch attack from Neil Bray? I don't think John Davies is going to catch them now. It looks like the minis are going to lock out the podium. Into Druids for the last time. Barry Syme just needs to keep a cool head here on this final lap. Through Graham Hill Bend for the last time. Neil Bray sideways. Snaps from understeer to oversteer. He's not going to catch Barry Syme. John Davies in behind them. Ibbotson still throwing it as sideways as possible. Well, it was big V8 muscle power that scored in race one. That's no use in these wet conditions. Small, agile front-wheel drive cars prevailing. It's going to be a podium lockout for the minis from Class C, and it's going to be a win for Scotland here at Brands Hatch. Barry Syme, number 25, comes in to take the victory in our Pultec Pre-66 Touring Cars. Neil Bray in second, and John Davies will complete the podium in third. James Ibbotson wins Class E with a brilliant fourth overall in his super sideways imp. Fifth goes to Piers Grange in the Mustang. I think, no, James Burroughs did hang on. Transponder a bit late there on James Burroughs' car. He's fifth. Piers Grange wins Class A in sixth place from the back of the grid. We'll confirm the rest of the results in a moment. Pole sitter Alan Greenall. Where did he end up? He finished in ninth place. Behind Nathan Williams and Andy Mesham. Good recovery after he's off midway through. We'll have a look at the uh, provisional results of uh, that one then. Barry Syme the winner by 1.2 seconds ahead of Neil Bray. John Davies completing an all Mini Cooper top three. Fitting on the uh, 60th birthday of the Mini Cooper this year. James Ibbotson, a brilliant sideways fourth in his imp winning Class E. James Burrows in his mini fifth. Then Piers Grange wins Class A, Class A 
and sixth in the Mustang. Nathan Williams seventh ahead of Andy Mesham. Alan Greenall taking ninth from pole position and Pat Keneally wins his class in the Lotus Cortina in tenth. First of the Anglia's home was Kevin Swan in 11th, ahead of Robin Slater. Luke Wilson wins his class in 13th. In 14th place went to Ez Walker. Tim Dodwell, a good 15th, ahead of Tim Scott Andrews in the second Falcon. Then it was Nathan Beresford in the BMW. Brian Bedford in the Austin A40. Keith Wright was the final finisher. We lost Martin Reynolds and Adam Gittings. They both pulled into the pits. Drivers heading back to Park Ferme. Then two races to go here at... Uh, Brands Hatch today. Hope the weather clears up a bit further for them. We've got the Kumho BMWs and then the uh, Goodyear Brick Car Endurance Championship Trophy category for their second races of the day. OK, we can now head down to uh, Park Ferme to hear from our intrepid mini pilots with Ewan Dunlop. Here in Park Ferme with our top two sitters, Barry Simon, Neil Bay. First of all, Barry. How was that for you? We all smiles at the moment. Well, very slippery, uh, but yeah, fantastic to uh, you know start third and progress. And yeah, we got a good start. Obviously, two Rio drive cars off the line struggled a bit more, and I just managed to squeeze in between them. So uh, quite exciting, but uh, mini space gap there, and I took it. And uh, yeah, it was great. And how was it with the uh, slightly damp track? Wow, it was really, really slippery. Uh, I mean, we tested on Friday and knew the track was very, very slick, but. Um, I don't know the other drivers, but it's certainly it was like literally like driving on ice. So to really be careful, and uh, yeah, just play this sort of percentage game. Make sure make sure I didn't lock up a brake and go wide. I think uh, Brands Hatch is uh, a lot of fun at the best of times, isn't it? Oh, it's a phenomenal track. Yeah, it's uh, you know, everybody knows Brands Hatch, and uh, you know a few good results over the years, but never a win. So uh, nice to pick up a, a win. Here. Congratulations, nice and you and you held off this chap over here. Yes, yes, that was fun, wasn't it? I kept him awake anyway, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a bit damp and. I got a lovely start because we do trialling in the winter and so I thought just ease it off the line, no wheel spin and let's go and uh, into the first corner. I got a little touch but that pushed me round into the paddock so that was nice. Uh, and uh, second place with silverware next to us, a successful weekend isn't it? It's lovely, no damage, we've had a fantastic time and after yesterday, today's been super. You know, it puts all in perspective doesn't it? It does, yeah, it does. No, yeah. and, and thanks to all the marshals and that sort of thing. They're absolutely fantastic, and without them, we can't have some fun. And, uh, I'll have to get him next time, won't I? So. Well, you, you guys had fun, we had fun watching. Really appreciate your time. Congratulations. Well, we respect each other, and so that's what it's all about. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Nice you Cheers, right. guys. And Dave, if you come back to us soon, I'm going to try and get James Ibbotson, Piers Grange, and Patrick Keneally winners in the E, A, and the F classes. But for now, back to you, Dave. OK, uh, thanks very much, Ewan. The BMW is just making their way out to the grid. I would like to hear from James, Mr Sideways Ibbotson there, after uh, his uh, quite superb drive there. Sideways permanently in the Hillman Imp.